I think it's really important given how powerful religion is in the world as a, a force for good and a force for evil that we understand it as it really is. And I think there's a lot of basically boxes that we tend to put the religions in that prevent us from looking at how they really are. And this, this idea that all religions are essentially the same, it blinds us to the distinctions that we need to see in order to understand them, but it also blinds us to the unique beauty that we find in each of, each of the religions. If basically Taoism is essentially the same as Christianity, well, what is there to learn from studying Taoism? What's the difference between a Taoist in China and a uh, Christian in, here in Washington, D.C.? Nobody with any intelligence says that the religions are exactly the same. I mean, clearly Muslims go on the Hajj to Mecca and Christians don't go on the Hajj to Mecca. And Muslims don't follow the seven sacraments of Catholicism, nor do they follow the four uh, noble truths of Buddhism. So clearly there are differences across religions, and that isn't the, the question. The question is whether those differences matter, whether those differences are, as many say, inessential or inconsequential. And I frankly think it's condescending um, to say, oh, well, the Hajj doesn't really matter. You know, tell a Muslim that. Like, how can it not matter? It's one of the five pillars of Islam or the five prayers a day that Muslims insist on also as part of the five pillars of Islam. Um, what's inconsequential or inessential about that? What always happens when people want to push the great religions into one box, into one mountaintop, right, rather than many mountaintops, is you come up with your own ad hoc idea of what the mountain mountaintop is, right? Oops, it just happens to be my, my vision of what religion should be, right? So maybe it's there's ultimately there's one God um, who maybe sounds and talks and walks a lot like Jesus. Or, you know, maybe it's the mystical experience, which just happens to be the piece of religion that you value. Or maybe it's, it's compassion, which just happens to be your particular preoccupation with what the religion should be doing. But in any case, it's you. If you look at the issue of race, for example, race and ethnicity, you know, there was a time when we thought that the way to get along was to be colorblind, right? To sort of just pretend, oh, we're all human beings. Who cares if somebody's black or somebody's Hispanic or somebody's uh, Chicana or if somebody's, you know, Chinese? It doesn't matter. Well, we figured out that, that that didn't work because always what happens there is somebody insinuates, it's usually a white person of privilege, insinuates into the generic human being their sense of what it is to be human. And we've had the same thing with religion. There's too much of the insinuation of Christian values into this sort of generic human religiosity that people want to talk about. And I want to be able to hear what the Confucians say, what the Taoists say, what the Buddhists say, what the Jews say about what religion is. And that's what I try to do in, in this book. I don't try to rank them in order of better and worse, but I do try to rank them in order of greatness, in order of their contemporary impact. And I do think you can say that, for example, as I argue, that Islam is the greatest religion right now. Islam is the religion we talk about. Islam is growing way faster than Christianity. In fact, over the last century, the Christian market share, if you want to call it that, percent of the world's population has declined from 35 to 33 percent. Over that same hundred years, the, the market share for Islam has gone up from 12 to 22 percent. And at the same time, Muslim the Islam um, is more civilizational than Christianity in the sense that it makes demands on all of our lives. It doesn't really say, oh, Sunday is for religion and the other days are you know for something else or um, God doesn't really care about you know XYZ in the way that uh, Christians have had this sort of give to Caesar what's Caesar and give to God um, what, what's God's so I do that kind of ranking where I start with Islam then Christianity then Confucianism um, but I don't try to do better and worse but I do better and worse inside the traditions in the sense of saying and I think this is important that, um, well, Judaism hasn't been so great on cultivating strategies for spirituality. That's why a lot of Jews are interested in Buddhist spirituality strategies, like Buddhist meditation and chanting, etc. Or um, Hindus haven't been so good at the social ethic, because they've said, you know, look, if you're born poor, that was kind of your own fault in another, in another life. And so when they've tried to remedy that, they've gone and looked in the direction of, say, the Protestant social gospel to borrow ideas of, of um, the preferential option for the poor, from, um, from Christianity. But at the same time, if you look at how can we use the mind to get rid of suffering, well, Buddhism is light years ahead of Christianity and light years ahead of Islam on that kind of question because they've devoted all these resources to trying to figure out how is it that we get into patterns that cause us our, cause us our suffering. So I do think we can um, 
evaluate the religions in terms of what they do well and what they do poorly, and I, and, and I try to do that. I used to teach uh, at Georgia State in Atlanta, and I taught my students Nazi theology. This created some problems with some parents who were like, why is my student at a state university you know, reading Nazi theology? But I, I read it not as an advocate of Nazi theology, obviously, but as someone who thought that um, especially Christians um, in the South, in the Bible Belt, should be, should be reading this theology to see the contortions that some Christians have ha, have performed with their own religion, right? To say, if I read the Gospels, it looks like we should go kill Jews. Um, my students all responded basically the same way. The Nazis who did that, they weren't Christians. That wasn't Christian theology. I find that response horrifying because what what it is is it's a sidestepping of the responsibility that I think any member of any religious tradition has to wrestle with and reform and transform the evil parts of their religion, the resources in their religion that can be used for, for, uh, to hurt other people. Same with Islam. You know, after 9-11, I understand why people would say, well, they weren't good Muslims. They weren't good Muslims. I mean, Islam says don't kill non-combatants. Um, but they were Muslims. They were saying Allahu Akbar as they were, you know, flying into the World Trade Center. They were they had their Qurans, you know, packed up while they were, you know, going to do this this evil deed. They were motivated by their understanding of Islam. They were using resources inside the Muslim tradition to perpetrate evil. And I think Muslims need to wrestle with that. I think they need to wrestle with the fact that there's a guy trying to blow up, you know, Times Square um, in the name of in the name of Allah. That doesn't mean that we should say, Muslim teaches you should kill people in Times Square, or Islam teaches you should kill people in Times Square. But, but Islam is a tradition that is producing people that want to do so, and we need to ask why. In the same way we should ask, why did Christianity produce slaveholders in the American South who you know, wanted to hold, hold slaves and wanted to whip them and, and rape them and think that that was perfectly a good Christian thing to do? The religions are not just good and true and beautiful things as many of the multiculturalists kind of kumbaya religious people want to tell us. Neither are they these horrible, poisonous, evil things that the new atheists want to say. They have, they have both, and I think we should look at both those things. The bottom line is that human beings throughout world history have not been purely motivated in what they do by economics and, and politics. Um, there is an idea, a notion of the human being that says human beings are basically motivated by greed and power. In other words, we are economic and political animals. This is a false view of the human being. The human being is a religious animal. The human being goes after imaginations of the transcendent. This is what we do. 99.99% of humans who have walked on this earth have been religious. Human beings kill for religious reasons. Human beings make peace for religious reasons. Human beings regulate their sexual lives for religious reasons. Human beings decide how to spend their money for religious reasons. If we want to understand the world, if we want to act in the world as a country or as individuals, we need to know something about religion. If you want to go to China and set up a business, you're going to make more money if you know something about Confucianism. If you want to go to Iraq and get involved in a war, you're going to be more successful if you know something about Islam and you know uh, the differences between Sunni and Shia Islam, which we Americans, when we went into that country, we did not know the difference. I think that's a scandal. And I think American soldiers died because we didn't know the difference between Sunni and Shia Islam and because we didn't know the differences between Islam and Christianity. So if you say, what, what does it matter? My response is, what matters more? What's more important in terms of knowing the world that we live in. This has nothing to do with whether you're a religious person or not. People say to me all the time, well, I don't, I don't believe in God. Like, I think religion's stupid. Like, why should I know something about religion? Well, because you don't control the world. <laughs> you know, the fact that you don't believe in God doesn't mean that people around the world and throughout world history haven't been motivated by their understandings of God or Jesus or Allah or Buddha or Confucius or whomever it, whomever it is. Religion is one of the most powerful forces in world history. And we need to know something about it in order to make sense of the world.